my name is Krishna. Uh, I will start with a quick introduction about myself. I have been with Tiger for over three and a half years and wear multiple hats. Prior to that, I was the head of strategy and portfolio management for Nokia's customer insight software business for four and a half years. And then I spent close to seven years at Zoho uh, in, in various leadership positions covering marketing and business development. Uh, with that out of the way, I wanted to cover some housekeeping stuff before getting to the agenda. Uh, you can chat with us or ask, ask us questions during the course of the webinar. My colleagues are online, panelists you know, will be able to answer them. So I really encourage you to participate in our polls. So we have three today. I think it will be informative for, for everybody. And I leave 10 minutes for Q&A before we conclude. And just a note, we will be sharing the recording of this webinar with all the registrants. All right. So let's start with our agenda. First off, we talk about a secret sauce. I kind of wanted to regale you with an analogy from using a recipe to, pre to prepare a refreshing drink. I combine uh, fresh pomegranate juice that I make, freshly squeezed tangerines, slices of lemon, red and green apples, and some Pellegrino. I let it sit for a few hours in the refrigerator, and then it is ready to go with some ice. Now in a CRM context, what does this actually mean? Is there such a thing as a secret recipe? One of the things that we have observed internally with our own sales team and with our customers is user adoption plays a key role in driving consistent sales success using any CRM. I mean, it doesn't need to be e-tiger, any CRM. We have, we have seen uh, customers migrate to e-tiger and you know, from e-tiger, at the end of the day, it, it, it comes down to effective user adoption. In the spirit of uncovering the secret sauce, we have identified three ingredients that drive user adoption. Onboarding simplicity, less manual work, and do more of what matters, not for sales performance. So there you have it. So this is the agenda for today. Onboarding has to do with how quickly users see value, what they see and feel can easily deter or encourage them. So the users have to be onboarded effectively for their role. Uh, I mean, this is the first time I'm actually using Zoom for, for uh, video conferencing. Uh, it's actually pretty good. I mean, uh, the only thing I had trouble with was the polls. Uh, it's slightly different from uh, GoToMeetings. Apart from that, I, it took me literally, I think, seven to eight minutes to, to, to get on board. So I think they've done a wonderful job. So what can you expect from this session? I will show you how you can drive the three ingredients by spending a good amount of time in the product. In the interest of time, I will not be able to deep dive into any specific area, but we are happy to take requests for future sessions. So I'll not get into this management buy-in, budget, et cetera. I think this is covered by CRM intelligence here very well. And we are happy to give you one-on-one -on -one guidance if you need it. Finally, my colleague and expert, Kyron, will cover lead nurturing in depth in a separate webinar. So our starting point is working with sales qualified opportunities. So we're not going to talk about lead nurturing, marketing campaigns, and all that. We're going to start with sales reps already having leads that are already sales qualified and working with sales qualified opportunities. All right, so having said that, I kind of wanted to, to make this interesting, I will work with a company called GrassPots. So GrassPots specializes in selling audio video and surveillance solutions to businesses in the US. So this is our use case for today. So let's start with the first ingredient, which is onboarding simplicity. I have segregated each by sales reps 
and sales managers. So what, 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 what is the most important thing that drives onboarding simplicity for a sales track? I think it was very simple for us. It is finding what they need easily from a dependable source and preferably a single source. Now, whether you import your data or manually enter it into your CRM, it is important to ensure it is cleansed. You either can detect and eliminate duplicates, but it's really important you take that you take that first step to cleanse the data. Because we, I, I, I often see uh, people complain about junk in, 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 the, in their CRM, and then when I look at where the data comes from, came from, it's usually uh, spreadsheets that that had empty fields. Um, I mean, people entered you know question marks and they called uh, used the word test. Uh, all kinds of stuff was there. All right. Having said that, let's jump into the product. All right. So this is the somewhat of the control panel for the Tiger CRM. So I'm in the settings page, as you can see, and I'm logged in as Steve McQueen, and I'm a sales manager who handles solution sales. We're going to get into that a little bit more. So I kind of wanted to show you guys a few fundamental things that has to be set up before you know you can actually do anything. So I'm logged in as a sales manager, and then we're going to look at the roles. So here are the roles that are there for the sales team. You have a VP of sales, you have the sales manager. Under the sales manager, you have a survey technician to do the security, site, security survey for, for sites, a security sales consultant, and typical inside sales reps who are primarily order takers and they hand off uh, opportunities to specific people, whether it's a semi technician or a security sales consultant. Right. So that's that is pretty much a simple sales hierarchy that we have. And then when we look at the groups, so I, I let me go back here. So we have a lot of groups here. And we're going to focus primarily on security solution sales today. And when I go to security solution sales, I see that I, I, as a sales manager for the, for the security solution sales, I'm a part of the team, and I also have five sales reps under me. Now, to quickly look into what a user information looks like. So you, as you can see, my role is sales manager, and primary group is security solution sales, and I report to Brandon Lee. And when I click on Brandon Lee, Brandon Lee is the VP of sales as we looked at the hierarchy. And he reports to Stefano Morana. And Stefano is the CEO. So this kind of completes the hierarchy. Now, now comes the important things, right? So what do salespeople primarily deal with? They deal with contacts. Contacts is basically the people, the individuals, you know, either in a B2C environment or individuals that belong to your business in a B2B environment. Here, I'm actually looking at, I want to emphasize one thing. I'm looking at my contacts. This is basically showing me all the contacts that are assigned to Steve McQueen. Now, why would a sales manager have uh, uh, contacts or, or be the primary point of contact uh, for anybody? Right? So here we have something called as a profile rating. So what Steve has done is, all the contacts that are classified as VIP or five star, Steve wants to make sure that he's the owner of that. So we will get into the profile rating shortly. Okay. Now, what I've also done is that this my contacts is a shared. So what I've done is I've shared my contacts list. This is a filter with my team. So if I go here, I want to just make sure I, I show you what it looks like. So in the my contacts, I have basically chosen the fields that I feel are relevant to my sales reps when they look at it, when they visualize their contacts. And then if you look at this, assigned to equals current user. So whoever logs in with whom this list has been shared will see only their contacts. So you want the sales reps to focus on what they own. Right? So you, you don't want to digress. You don't want them to be looking at all around the place. 
So you want to have this my list for every sales rep, whether it's a contact or organization or not. So here you can see I've shared it with my group, which is the, which is the security solution today. Okay, I'm not going to do something. Okay. Now, I will jump into the profile scoring in a minute so that I don't lose that topic. Now, let's look at organizations. So, organizations is also very similar. I have my organizations or, or, or my companies that are you know, core or my accounts. And again, I have assigned as a sales manager the VIP customers to myself because I want to make sure that I am the point of contact. And they also feel that they have a manager of a they have a contact of sales manager and they're able to reach anytime. So there are many reasons why you may want to have VIP customers uh, assigned to a sales manager instead of a sales rep. I mean, this is this is not necessary, but this is something that I have chosen to do. Once again, in my organizations, so I have shared this with my group, and the group will see each member of the group will see my organizations, and it will only show the organizations that they are assigned. All right now we talked about contacts we talked about organizations so this is basically this has to do with finding information right so you they work with contacts they need to be able to find everything that pertains to a contact with the industry its profile rating its billing city you can customize the columns the way you want right we have full flexibility you can even include custom fields as columns as as an ep now let's jump into a interesting profile scoring uh, feature um, so I think some of the companies like Big Market owned uh, Eloqua uh, and Exact Target and, and all of these companies have, but they have not separated lead scoring from profile scoring. So profile score is basically it indicates how closely a customer matches your ideal customer profile. So we have that for organizations and also for contacts. So let me walk you through the organization profile score. So for me, when I look at the industry. I cater to malls, the security solutions are there in malls, it's there in airports, it's there in uh, wholesale clubs, uh, it's in logistics, uh, at, at universities, and, and, and also IT services. But when you look at the score, uh, when it's a mall or airport or a wholesale, it's very high because we see this as high value customers that are likely, that are likely to buy a lot from us. right? And then when you look at the locations, when there, is, when there are a lot of locations, so each location is likely to need a security solution. So if I'm able to sell my security solution to one unit, I may be able to do the same with other units across the globe, across the US. All right, and then I've looked at employee count. This is also relevant because a high employee count would mean that they may actually have a need for a lot more audio video, uh, headsets and such. And then I've also included uh, annual revenue. So this basically, I've included this because it kind of means that, okay, they are willing to spend money, uh, big money on, 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 on the things that we sell. Right? On the right-hand side, what this means is, so you have a maximum score for each attribute, right? So for, for mall, it's 30, for, uh, for locations, it's 50, and value. So if you add up all the top scores, right? And you arrive at a value, and if the score is 70% of the max score, we rate that customer as a five star. If it's 60%, we rate that as four star and so. So this is how you can define your ideal customer profile using specific attributes that are relevant to your business. So you don't have to go with these. You can actually add custom attributes that define ideal customer profile. All right, now I'm gonna to jump to contact and let's see. So for, for contacts, it was simple. So I actually based it on what their role is. So if they're a procurement manager, so I have the right contact, they're likely to be the, you know, the best point of contact to sell and security solution sales. And if there's, it's a head of security, it's also very high. And um, so IT manager is, is, is given very low. And then if it's 90% of the max score here, I've kind of changed it a little bit. I'm not using 70, I'm using 90. So it's, it's, it's pretty much up to you as to how you want to define this. All right. So now we covered the profile scoring. So we talked about the organization, we talked about contacts, and we wanted to discuss the profile score for both. Now, the other, probably the most important thing 
sales reps deal with is opportunities, right? So here I'm showing all the opportunities that pertain to security solution deals that are still open. Now here, like I showed you before, the list itself is completely customizable. And if I wanted to add a list, I can actually add a list. Let me show you my, let's show my opportunities. So my, my opportunities. And I'm, I typically use a name, amount, and who it is, the contact, expected close date, and, and which pipeline is probably not needed because uh, the security solution sales team already know they're in that pipeline, right? Sales stage is important, assigned to is not needed, modified cam is not needed. I'm going to add a condition here. And if assigned to equals, I want to select current user, that is me, okay? And then I want to go down here and I want to share this with my, my team, security solution sales. Okay, I think this is blocking me from, I don't know how to, ah, all right, so I'll save it. Okay, so it's saved and it's not showing up because I don't have any opportunities assigned to myself being a sales manager. It's always with the sales reps. So I'm going to go back to my open security solution deals and just move this back to the bottom. Now, so every member of my sales team is going to see that my opportunities, like I said before, I want them to focus on what is assigned to them. And we'll, we'll talk about how opportunities are routed to groups and how it's assigned either ad hoc or round robin, et cetera, you know, sh shortly. Um, so I kind of wanted to cover contacts organizations, opportunities, and how profile scores are used to ensure that sales reps know how important a particular contact is or how important a particular organization is or both. All right, so let's, let's I'm gonna uh, step back into the, so we talked about sales reps. We talked about how they can find information easily from a dependable source. All of this is in the tiger and then when I go into opportunities, I missed one thing. So I want to show one, one more thing here. When I look at the opportunity here, it has a red dot. And it's also the largest amount, right? It's assigned to Isabella. And when I go here and see, this opportunity has been idle for 25 days. So we have an idle reminder. If it's, if it's idle for more than a week, we actually have that red dot. So what you can do is you can jump in to this opportunity. And I kind of wanted to show you this, this summary view so that it, it also uh, is in the purview of giving sales reps access to information that they need. So here I have a few fields in the summary view that I feel are important. I want the region because sales reps belong to a particular region and they can actually go and see if, you know, if the region is right or if it's not uh, assigned right, they can actually assign it and have the opportunity routed to the right. Uh, a right team. All right. Now, let's look at a few things here. So we talked about finding information, but there is this is just static data where we have opportunities, we have contacts, uh, and, and, and uh, we have organizations. But there is interactions right happening. And here, if you can see, on this opportunity, I can actually have an interaction. Right, Stefana, who is the um, VP of sales has noticed that this opportunity, this big opportunity is stalled, right? Nothing has happened for 25 days. So he has basically commented, commented to Steve, which is me, my, my boss is asking me, what's happening with this? Can you reassign this to Isabella, to someone else if Isabella is busy? Now what I do is, so, so and then I actually post, survey is pending since the security. So now I, he has also marked Isabella here. So if you see at, so Isabella would also see that. And Isabella has come back to Steve saying that survey is pending since security personnel are off for a week. Now I can actually go to the survey East team and 
ask for, for, for somebody who knows a contact uh, in their organization and see if they can push this forward. So I can actually push this in. And everybody in the survey each team will see this message and are able to respond saying that, okay, I'm on it. All right. So even the interaction data is all there. And then when you look at contacts that belong to the organization, and we can quickly look at this. So we have Larry Holmes, who is the primary contact. And then we can look at the activities, right? So there is a meeting planned, right? To, to actually this, yeah, okay, so this is some uh, data that, that has crept in. All right, let me actually go to see, see what happens here. Okay. okay, so there is a meeting planned uh, for the surveillance. And so this is the event that I was talking about. So let me go back. Yeah, so in an organization, you can ha actually have activities that are planned to close an opportunity. All right, okay, good. So let me actually step back. So we talked about sales reps now, and let me move on to sales managers. Right? So one of the things that sales managers can leverage from onboarding simplicity is an ease with which they can organize their teams, which we just saw in the beginning. And the second thing is the sales process, right? They want to be able to optimize the sales process to their customers' buying needs. And they want to understand what's happening with the current pipeline, right? So these are the oh, things that they want to know right away, right? For, for, for a simple onboarding. All right. So let's now go back into the driver. All right, so I'm going to discuss the sales pipeline here. So since GrassBots sells products like audio video, that are pretty much, there's no services involved, it's called a product sale. So I have set up a pipeline to sell products. So an opportunity would go through these sales stages, new, qualifying, proposal, negotiation, ready to close, and an unclosed one. Whereas, in solution sale, there are a couple of new states that are actually needed. One is the needs analysis and site survey. So these are only specific to the pipeline that is solution. So each opportunity will be assigned to a particular pipeline. So this is how you optimize your sales process to your customer buying cycle. So when somebody is buying security solution from grass parts, so it involves a site survey, it involves a needs analysis, somebody actually go to physically visit the site, understand you know, how long the wires are, you know, where the security cameras have, have, have to be placed, et cetera. So these are not relevant to the other one. So this is how you can actually, while, while new qualifying and these other uh, sales stages are common across a lot of businesses, uh, every business is likely to have specific sales stages that pertain to their customer buying cycle. So, and then let's actually go in here so when I say, uh, let's actually jump into a bit more here. It's more interesting, okay? Now there are a few things I wanted to explain here. So this is the sequence that I talked about. And the probability is used for calculating rated revenue. Now, I believe, I think as a STEAM team believes that when an opportunity is in qualifying stage, the chances of winning it is 20%. And as it advances through the funnel, when it comes to ready to close, um, it's as high as 80%. So what you can do is based on your experience, based on the analytics that you have, you can actually have this populated every quarter. So that gives an accurate indication of what your rated revenue is. And then you're not doing any guesswork and it's consistent. You're using the same probabilities across the board. On the right hand side, this column here, so this sales stages, right? So you can move this, uh, an opportunity from one sales stage to, to another, but you can restrict specific roles from moving to a particular sales stage. For example, um, if it's in a proposal state, uh, I, 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 want on, uh, I want only the sales manager to, to be able to do that. So I will basically go here and add remove all the other roles and allow only the sales manager. So here for simplicity, I've give, given permission for all roles to set a sales stage 
do anything, right? So to do any of these sales tools. So let me actually quickly go here and show you. Uh, I jumped ahead. All right. So what what I can do is that you can actually regress the sales stage. So if I did not have permission to move the sales stage in needs analysis in my role as, as, as a sales manager, I would not see this. This, this uh, block here would not show. So I would not be able to move this opportunity here. So if I just click on this, so it's basically asking for a survey status because it's a required field and sales stage is needs analysis and I can select its ending and I say, all right, so I need to move this out of the way. Okay, let's save. So it's moved back to needs analysis. So you can actually manage the progression manually, and you can also do it autom automatically. I'll actually show you that in, 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 in a short way. All right, so let me go back to the slide. So we talked about the sales process, and let's look at understanding the pipeline. So these are the three things that we believe are important for onboarding sales managers. Right. All right. So this is a Kanban view of opportunities. So this is the list view. And as a sales manager, if I wanted to know what's going on, this is a little bit hard to understand. So what I would do is I would use the Kanban view. And I'm not going to select the solution. So it's telling me what's going on. So the good news is I can actually quickly see there's a healthy pipeline of new opportunities. And you know, you want you want this number to gradually come down, but it, it's not necessary that at every point of time it's going to follow that sequence. So when I go here, all right, I need to move this away and go to the right and see how, how many are in the advanced stages. So it actually doesn't look too bad. You know, I have two in ready to close, and negotiation is one, proposal is three, and even the values or, or the dollar values are actually not too shabby. Okay. Now, within each of these blocks, I can actually do a few, few things. Right? This is telling me it's a campus surveillance opportunity, and expected close date is February 1st. So it's, it's past its close date. And I can look at the detailed view of the opportunity right from Kanban view. I can edit, I can delete, I can add even, I can do a lot of things right here. And at the same time, I can have the opportunity to actually move this here, right? So you wanna make sure that you don't move it to closed one by mistake, right? So you wanna make sure that you see that square and put it there, so it'll move to that. So you can actually move opportunities uh, from the summary view of the opportunity as well as, well as the Kanban view. All right, so I see a lot of Q and A, a uh, lot of comments. Okay, Hope, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, hoping that my, my, my panelists are able to respond to any questions. All right, so we have, we talked about now sales managers. Now, now it's the poll time. So our intent of this poll is to understand the key factors that affect CRM onboarding based on your experience, right? So I'm going to launch the poll now. You know, I really encourage everybody to participate. I think it will help us. I think it will help the rest of the audience, uh, you know, to understand what are the factors, right, that, that influence something that we believe is very important for sales success. Okay, so I'm going to launch the... All right. Um, that's one. Okay. All right, so I've launched the poll. So if you can please take um, a couple of moments to, to respond to it, I'd really appreciate it. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a, a minute, minute and a half, thank you.
people are still voting, so I'll, I'll give it, you know, one more minute or, or at least 30 seconds. Thank you. Okay, I think we, we got most of the responses and, and, and it's, it's kind of um, validating to some extent that, that you know, final information is, is the most important one, uh, you know, followed by uh, actually visualize, you know, current past performance and organizing the sales team and, uh, and then sales process. And we have other also. So if you can please specify on chat, this will actually help us because Zoom does not allow us to capture uh, text here. At least I, I, I couldn't figure out how to do it. That. Okay, so I'll share results. Okay, so everybody has a chance to quickly see it. All right, so now we went through the onboarding, the first ingredient. We just completed the first ingredient of our secret sauce. So now we're going to start with the second one. The less manual work, uh, I'm pretty sure that everybody likes it. And then, then uh, uh, we have heard that you know once once a, a CRM is is brought in, uh, people actually have to work harder, you know, because not only do they need to close deals, but they have to enter data and they have to do a whole bunch of stuff that's required for uh, whether it's reporting or complete this information or having information in the same place, you know, etc. So let's see how sales reps can benefit from this, right? They can be spared of the burden of data entry. So I want to show you how uh, that can be done. Use the system to schedule appointments because this is the other um, component, right? Then when, when uh, you're trying to schedule an appointment, you back and go back and forth via email, uh, your schedule changes, their schedule changes. Uh, I mean, this can become like, you know, uh, two, two to three emails, you know, two or three phone calls to actually get something set up. So we're going to show you something where you can do it in one click and it's done. And you can use a system to actually remind about things that are important. And then you can actually automatically seek approvals when mandated. So in this particular context, I'll show you that every security solutions team that has a 10% discount has to automatically go through an approval. So when I create a code as a sales rep, it will automatically, uh, with a 10% discount or more, or more, more uh, 10 or more discount, it will automatically go to Steve McQueen for approval. And then you can leverage the collective wisdom uh, to close important and complex deals. I think this we quickly uh, reviewed when we asked others to help. And you use relevant content that has worked well. So this, I, I have a screenshot because I don't have a, a good way to capture this in this particular instance. All right. Okay, let's jump in. So we're going to start with what is called as a mail rule. Okay, so I'm going to go here. So you actually, I, I kind of wanted to show you this. You can navigate from the central control panel to any way you want. So mail room comes under automation. So we were talking about how to avoid manual work. And I'm going to show you mail room. And I'm also going to show you workflows that I have configured. So let's go to mail room, right? So we're dealing with opportunities. So I'm just going to touch upon how it works in the case of opportunities. Let's go here. So what this is saying is that grass parts would have a in inbox called sales at or security solution sales at grasspots.com. And what they would do is they would redirect emails that come in to the mail room address. This is the unique address. So we kind of use this funky looking um, email address because it's uh, difficult for people uh, to directly spam it. So we check you know, if it contains this, right? So if, if an email came into sales 
at glassbox.com and that got forwarded to redirected to this address. We quickly check and then we follow these rules, right? So we create a contact. So when an email is sent from a person, not only we create an opportunity and we create a contact if one does not exist. And you have the option to assign the opportunity to a particular group. Here I'm assigning it to inside sales because what a lot of companies do is that they have inside sales filter and route opportunities as needed. Right? You can use autofill from, uh, from email body. If you have specific fields that you want to capture from an email, from a structured email that you want to populate the opportunity with, you can do that. The alternative is to actually use a web form so that you can get all the fields that are actually needed that you believe uh, that you believe are needed for an opportunity to be opportunity to be created and qualified as something worth pursuing all right so this is the mail room and I'll, I'll actually show you um how it actually creates an opportunity so we're gonna go back here and i wanted to show you one more so we talked about sales reps not worrying about creating an opportunity when something lands up in, in, into the sales inbox, right? So I'll, I'll come to the inbox later. Okay, so I actually wanted to show you uh, a workflow before, while, while we are on the topic of automation. So now I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna to navigate to, to that page now, just so you get a feel for it. So I want to show you the workflows. So what we do is we go to the settings page and I have workflows. And I'm gonna choose opportunities because workflows can be configured for contacts for any module. And I want to bring to your attention only two workflows. So I want to show you route opportunities to solution sales or security solution sales. Let's see what this actually does. So it looks at when an opportunity is created. So the mail room gets an email, it creates an opportunity. And then if the subject contains, subject of the email contains security, or you can add other conditions, you know, it may contain surveillance, or you can have different combinations of it. And then I want to route this to the Security solution sales. I want to assign the pipeline to solution, like we just discussed the two pipeline, the product pipeline and the solution pipeline. I want the sales stage to be qualifying. So you can actually set it to anything. So the default amount you start with is 25,000, but you can actually leave it blank. So I've set it to 25,000. All right. So now actually I'm going to send an email to the mail room. And let's see the opportunity show up in this list. All right, so I'm gonna do it by, from, from my other, other PC because I don't want to log out, log in because I think it will be a little bit messy. Please bear with me for one minute. Now, assuming VTiger is a customer of Crosspods, so from my VTiger account, I've actually sent an email to the mailroom address. It, typically, it would have been sales at grassbots.com since we don't own the domain yet. So we are sending the email directly to the mailroom address. And um, I, I kind of wanted to show you guys one more thing here. So let's go to the second stage once again. And then go. And I want to see when. So when I look at show emails, so this email, this is the email I just sent and it has not been scanned yet. So once it is scanned, an opportunity will be created. And oh, let me see if, okay, so the word security, security is there in the title. 
So it should route that opportunity, it should create an opportunity, mailroom should create an opportunity, and it should route, it should route it to the security solution sales. Or how are we doing that time? Okay, so I think I'll have to rush through this a little bit because I really want to get to insights. All right, so let's look at opportunities. Um, mailroom, so I, I, once it's scanned, we should see that opportunity. Okay, so it has been scanned. So when I search um, for small, okay, this is the one that I said. So it has, no, the opportunity has been created. Since it contains security, it has been routed to security solution sales. All right. So we talked about um, the data entry, things getting created automatically. And let's look at appointment pages quickly. So every user can actually pre create a, an appointment page. So I'm going to go back to appointment pages here. And if you look at this particular appointment page, what this does is it gives you a link. It, this is a meeting link. And all you need to do when I, when I want to schedule an appointment with a customer or a prospect, I basically send them this meeting link. And that meeting link basically will have, will look like this. Right? So that meeting link will. So Steve McQueen actually has sent a meeting link to Krishna at the Tiger. And as a recipient, I can actually look through this and I can decide uh, when I can select a date. And here is all the um, time slot that Steve is available to meet. I say this and I will. Basically, use Krishna and Jeep. And once I put in my email address, tiger.com, schedule event. So, what it does is that it puts a calendar event in Steve McQueen's calendar for 26th the Monday at 10 30 a.m. So it's all done, right? So I sent a meeting link and then I don't have to worry because when the recipient replies, I know the calendar event is gonna be in my calendar. So, so it's 26th, let's look at my calendar for 26th. All right, so. I have to search for calendar, all right? All right, so we're gonna look at weekly. Um, Uh, let me see how do I get to it. So. Okay, good. So we want to look at 26. If you look at this, so it has actually scheduled the appointment because the recipient of the invite actually accepted, specified the time, and it's there, boom, on my calendar. All right. So what I want to do in the interest of time, we really have only 15 minutes, is I want to show you less manual work for managers. And a couple of things I wanna show you guys. So automated routing and assignment we, we already talked about. Uh, plan, communicate, and track their sales quota. We'll talk about that. And one quick thing that I wanna show about, show you guys about approvals. Now, as, as, as Steve McQueen, when I look at VTiger Buzz, it shows me a few notifications and alerts. When I look at smart alerts, it's showing me that there is an approval that is waiting from on me, right? So it's from Isabella. And then I can actually look at this, right, as to what this is. So she has generated 10% quote approval and Robert Half is organization. It's it's uh, in a barishine, it's related to barishine. And then, then I can decide uh, if I want to approve this. And if I want to approve it, I can approve it right there. Okay, so I can type in a message. Good luck. Good luck and, and save. All right, so we talked about approvals and let's talk about, um, hold on a second. Let's, let's, let's look at, visualize what is happening. Let's manual work for sales managers because I think this is probably the, the topic that I want to spend at least 10 minutes on. Okay. So as a sales manager, uh, Steve McQueen would come into Sales Insights, see what is happening currently 
and what has happened in the past. So what I have done is I have used all the groups and roles, so because that's not a filter. I'm filtering by expected close date because that's what uh, you're going you're gonna to anchor on. And I'm primarily interested in the solution because I'm responsible for security solutions. And then I'm going to close this filter. Now quickly, I can see my pipeline. Right? So here are open opportunities. And it's showing me by sales stage. Right? So 26% and 200, 214,000 worth is in new. And as you progress, uh, it gets, usually gets smaller and smaller. And it's a healthy pipeline. Now, whether it's healthy or not, I think it would depend on, on, on the quotas and, and, uh, that, that you have as a sales manager. And it shows you the wind loss analysis. So it's basically saying the team has won 53%, amounting to 710,500. 700, uh, and then if you scroll down, it's important to see where these opportunities are spending time. Right? So it's, it's taking quite some time in, 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 in the new state, so before it actually gets to qualifying. So when it's new, um, maybe you want to figure out why uh, they're spending two days. Maybe you want it to be one day. And then when you look at uh, ready to close, it's actually closing in 15 hours. I think that's pretty quick. Negotiation is, so everything is actually pretty quick. And then you can look at the top performers of your sales team, and Isabella Max and uh, Emily. And then to come down, this is important, right? So this, this is showing you what has already happened. And here it's actually showing you the top 10 opportunities. And one of the things that I actually um, referenced this opportunity before as well. So this is showing the red dot here, right? This opportunity was idle for 25 days. And this is a scientist, but this is the biggest one. And uh, so forth. Right? There's a lot of, quite a lot of opportunities that pertain to Captain campus surveillance. And uh, Isabella has three of them. And Samir has, has, has two. And it gives you the sales stages, how advanced they are. Right? So this, this is a good indication of where your top, top, of top five opportunities are. What sales stage? Who is working on it? How big is it? Um, and these are the key things you may want to know. Right? And then you look at the key metrics of top performers. Number of opportunities. One, the dollar amount. Uh, average size at the time to close. This is interesting. You'll see that Isabella has taken 11 days, but she's closed a lot, while Emily has only five, but she has closed opportunities a lot quicker than everybody else. All right? And then you can jump into top lost opportunities because you want to know uh, what are the things that you've lost, right? The, the big ones. And then maybe you want to go to Nathan and see why, you know, he has uh, lost close to $100,000 of opportunities. All right. Now, again, keeping track of time. Now, this is the dashboard. This is the sales insights dashboard. Now, we can actually look at a lot of things on this uh, activity count. I want to jump into one particular um, chart that, is, that I, I feel is very useful. So, I'm going to open this up. So, what this is showing is that are your opportunities getting the right attention, right? So this is actually not a user, but it's showing up because it's assigned to a group, security solution sales, is not assigned to anybody. Now, the way I would read this chart is, the size of the circle shows how active your sales rep has been with that opportunity. And the higher you go, the bigger the opportunity is. So you do not want to see small circles high up. Right? When anything that's high up, you want to see big circles. And you definitely don't want to see small red circles high up. So this is basically saying the opportunity amount is 54,000. It's stuck in needs analysis. Activity can't say, and there has been activity, no activity since 25 days. And then when I look at, uh, there's an opportunity here. So no activity for one month. And you also don't want to see big circles here, right? So because it's a small opportunity, but Samir is devoting a lot of attention to it. Right? The bigger the circle, the more attention it's getting. So you don't want to see big circles in the bottom. So you want to see big circles in the top, and you definitely don't, don't want them to be red. All right, so let me close this out. And I want to cover one more chart. Now, this, uh, this funnel progression that uh, a lot of you may have already seen. So the important thing is it kind of shows you how opportunities are moving through the funnel and where they're actually exiting. So when I look at this, right? So there's 2 million that entered 
total opportunities 85 and 79 of that 85 opportunities actually progressed which is actually very good and you can see where there is a drastic drop off right so in the initial stages you don't want drop off right you don't want a drop off of say 50 percent from you right you want them to advance and they start uh, dropping off a little bit later at the same time you don't want to see a big drop off when they're ready to close so let's actually look at this so here in negotiation 42 out of 43 opportunities actually progressed to ready to close which is actually very healthy and when i look at this total opportunities and in ready to close 32 of 34 actually progressed so this kind of tells you where your opportunities are actually dropping off and then you can actually jump in and figure out um, is this the right thing i mean should, should opportunities be dropping off uh, this late uh, in the sales stage you can actually jump in and understand what is happening all right so we have okay so i, I still have some time then let's look at sales cycle by duration So I quickly uh, alluded to this before, right? So you want to understand where time is spent, which sales stage time is spent for your sales steps. So ignore um, inside sales because it's a group. So the skills solution sales is also a group. But when I look at Isabella, Samir, Nathan, Max, and Emily on my team, so I can see that you know Isabella that, that it, you know it stays in you for for two and a half days versus when I look at Emily, it's less than half of that. And when I look at the amount of time Isabella spends on qualifying an opportunity is two and a half days, more than anybody else. But at the same time, I, I can see that she's very successful. So I feel that this is actually a good thing. And if somebody is spending a lot less time with Emily, she's able to close it faster, but she's not able to close as many deals and she's not able to close as the, the dollar amount as well. So what, there's a good learning here. So you want to see best practices followed by your best sales reps, right? Where do they spend the most time? And there may be also people who get through negotiation very quickly. So if I look at this, pretty much they're all comparable in negotiation. But when I look at this, in the proposal stage, uh, Emily is able to prepare her proposals right, very quickly. But does that mean that that's a good thing? So Isabella spends her time, but at the same time, the results show that spending the time preparing the proposal and needs analysis is actually not a bad thing. All right, how about we do budget? So we got five more minutes. And uh, activity count and effort. So this is basically showing where your sales team is spending most of their time. If you look at this again, Isabella puts in a lot of effort. You can see that the number of phone calls and the duration of the entire, all of their phone calls is five days. That means, you know, 25, 24 times five, 120 hours of phone calls, other meetings and emails. She has sent 76 emails. And when I look at Samir, uh, he has not been very busy and it also shows in the results that he has achieved. And this kind of tells you what your sales guys have been up to, right? I mean, it has to align with what they're actually producing. And we'll quickly get to that chart. Let's look at the activity efficiency. I'm going to disable a few so that we look at only a couple, and that's easier. So, uh, all right. So this is basically showing the average activity count to close an opportunity. So green is somewhere. And when I look at this, average activity count, I mean, this doesn't make sense because he has not closed anything. So he has had activity count of six, but he has one only, one opportunity. But as when I look at Isabella, she has one four. And an average, uh, the activity count is Minus four. Okay, phone calls is 30, and it's giving you the, actually the details meeting, and the count is 22. I mean, then, uh, you, you would round it off. It's average uh, activity count is, is 23. I mean, since it's an average, it's showing the decimal. I think we probably need to remove that. And then when I look at January, right? So Emily has been actually pretty busy, but she has one only one opportunity. And 
sorry, so, sorry, I think this is, this is Samir, so I got confused for a second, right? So he has actually spent a lot of time, right? He has made a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, a lot of meetings, but he has been able to close only one opportunity. Whereas Isabella has, has won three, and her activity count is almost half of what Samir says. So there's something that Samir is not doing right. All right, so, all right, so, so we have a couple of minutes and I wanted to show you guys one more thing before. No, so this is actually an important thing to know, right? So when, when you lease, when, when your teams, when your sales team, sales reps lose deals, you want to understand why, right? So you basically institute uh, a discipline that they actually capture their lost reason, right? If the lost reason can actually help your product management, also your sales team, your marketing team, do their best to overcome something that is actually in control, right? In, in their control. When you look at this, right? So price seems to be a big factor and features not so much and unavailable is also small. So for most of the deals, right? Almost like 70% of the deals, I know why we are losing. And this is, this is a good knowledge for a sales manager to have it's at his disposal without asking every salesperson, right? So again, they do less work. All right. So now I actually wanted to go back into this, um, into my presentation uh, in the interest of time and launch the second poll. Right, so I'm going to launch the second poll. So I kind of wanted to see, you know, where your sales reps and managers spend most of their time that you feel a CRM should help help them with. Okay, so I've launched the poll uh, once again. You know, thank you for your participation. Please, please uh, take a moment to, to to respond to it. So I think I'll give it one minute this time in the interest of concluding on time. So people are still voting. So I'll give it five more seconds. All right, so I'm gonna close the poll. Okay, I'm gonna share the results with me so that you get a chance to see it. All right. All right, so we, I think how once again, you have, you know, uh, data entry is a big thing, uh, task prioritization is a big thing, you know, trying to remember things, um, and staying on top of things, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna get this out. All right, so now we come to the third topic. So we, we, we discussed the first two ingredients for the sauce, and then the third one is actually do more of what matters. So this is for sales reps. This is really a consequence of doing one and two. The first, getting the first two recipes right, the onboarding and doing less work right. And sales reps can then focus on connecting with customers, understanding their needs better, so that they can serve them better. Right. So this is a consequence of doing one and two right. Right. For sales managers, once again, I think it's a consequence of one and two. So their primary responsibility to is to get the best out of their teams and address things you know when they're not going right and drive sales success. And I kind of want to close with one quote before I open up for Q and A. All right, this is the last poll, and uh, thank you. All right, so I want to understand you know what your sales reps and managers what you want them to focus on with the extra time that they have once they're onboarded well, when they have less work to do because the CRM is actually doing a lot of things for them. 
All right, so I'm going to launch this. You know, please take a moment and I'll give it one minute. Uh, I really appreciate uh, you actually responding to the posts. Very informative for everybody. All right, okay, I'll, I'll stop the poll now and share the results. Okay, I, I still see some people voting, so let me give it 10 more seconds. Thank you. Okay. I think quality and quantity of outreach yeah, is definitely, uh, is, is, is an opener, I think. Uh, Close to 60% have responded on compelling proposals and then you know getting the best out of the team. So I think uh, it's, it's good. Thank you. So before I move to QA, um, there's one thing I want to cover. All right. Inbox. So if, if you can bear with me for, for, for a couple of minutes. So within the Tiger, we have a feature called Sales Inbox. So people who use Outlook or Gmail, they can actually continue using, but you, or you can use to use the sales inbox that, that is provided as a part of the title. So the good thing about this is you can actually set up group inboxes. So I could have a security solution sales inbox, and when emails come into that, I know who it is from, you know? If I don't, I can actually add that particular person as a contact, and I can assign a conversation to a particular sales rep. And you can, in this particular case, this conversation is actually owned by this rep. And you can actually reassign it to somebody else. And if you go here, you can actually add a contact. You know, when the contact, here in this case, the contact already exists because you can see it here. If the contact does not exist, you can actually add a contact and you can do wonderful things with it. So you don't have to rely on, 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 on on Gmail or Outlook, which becomes you know fairly challenging to segregate emails, have ownership of conversations. And the best thing is, you know, when it's done, you can mark it as done so that you know it doesn't appear again. Right? So when the conversation is closed, conversation has an owner, and you can have a contact associated with it, like you had here. And then once the conversation is uh, concluded, you can mark it as closed. So the, uh, uh, my colleague Kyron actually did a webinar dedicated to sales inbox. I think uh, people who are interested in, on, uh, in reviewing it uh, will be more than happy to share that and uh, ditto with sales insights. Uh, having said that, um, I will open it uh, for Q&A. Hey guys, um, all right, uh, it's 9.20. Uh, the questions do still keep coming in. We do want to be able to get to everyone, but I don't think uh, at the pace that they're coming in, we'll be able to um, answer them all here. So I ask that you, if, if you still have a question that you need to, you know, you want answered, please do email us at support at vtiger.com. We will answer all of you there. Um, we will probably be closing this webinar in about one minute. So just wanted to give you a heads up. We may not get to everyone. We definitely won't get to everyone. But again, just email us at support at vtiger.com and we'll, we'll take care of you there. All right. Thanks for joining everyone. We really appreciate your participation, your attendance, and um, you know we will also be sending this webinar, uh, a recording of the webinar, to everyone via email. It's also available at vtiger.com forward slash webinars uh, in case you missed any part of it and you wanted to uh, to review it. Uh, so that's all I had to say. Thanks again. Um, take care. Have a nice rest of your week and weekend. All right. Thanks, Karen, and uh, thanks, everybody, uh, for joining.
and we look forward to seeing you all in our next session that will be conducted by Kyron. And I think uh, we will wrap it up now. Thank you.